All right all, and welcome back to a new video and looking ahead at day two of the Leopardstown Christmas Festival alongside a few bits of action from Limerick, Chepstow and Kempton. Just at the end of Stephen's Day there, as you see, as you can see, I did a big dress up for it. Uh, tried to get involved as, as much as I could. Obviously disappointing uh, with the way things are that you can't be up in Leopardstown. But looking at the results today, absolute bloodbath for punters. If you had a good day punting today, fair play to you. Tip, your, tip my hat. It was one of those days it just didn't quite go for us. Obviously, you land, a, if you do land a big touch, you know, say with Big King, uh, I put up a 10 to 1 on Twitter, put him up at 9 to 1 on here. Uh, ends up getting kind of backed into 4-1, to one, comes second, arguably a bit unlucky. If that goes in, it uh, would have been even money for the day pretty much. But not much to f uh, shout home about. Obviously very disappointing. Black Bow fell, a steering for launch fell. Clante Zobo all but fell in the King George. Uh, we had Sham Blue, a winner at 15-8. to eight, And also... Um, we had obviously a place on Big King and a place on Windsor Avenue. Uh, do go over and check out the uh, tips on Twitter as well. Sometimes I add in a couple more. I did add in a couple more today. Uh, I think they, um, you know, ju just as, as an added bonus, I suppose. But going in to day two, uh, confidence not battered, but a little bit bruised uh, going into day two. So look, we're going to hopefully find a few winners. Hopefully the thing will turn on its head and uh, not much went to form today. I didn't think anyway. Uh, so hopefully things may change around and things will start going more towards form lines tomorrow. Starting off with the 12.05 at Leopardstown, the juvenile hurdle. I'm going to take a chance at one as at a pretty useless each way price, but it's, it's an each way price. Usually my each way values are if it's 5 to 1 or above, you can just about justify it being an each way price as long as you're getting more back uh, from your fifth of the odds. And it's a horse called Loved Out for Tom and David Mullins, currently 11 to 2. Uh, this horse was second to Alexei Vronsky on ju his juvenile hurdle debut, uh, where he didn't jump very well, but he was well back that day into 6 to 4, and he actually ran a miraculously good race uh, given how badly the horse jumped. You look at the form, Peckham Springs was back in third there for Paul Stafford. Peckham Str Springs has gone on to win since, so the form doesn't look too bad. And I'm just not so sure about this Mullins favourite, and it is unlike me probably to go against a, a Mullins favourite but I just think this Il Mig is or sorry this uh, Dark Voyager is potentially a little bit vulnerable at the prices I think Il Mig's a bit vulnerable obviously came fifth last time out behind Peckham Springs so on a cross form line uh, Il Mig should be held by our selection the real fly in the ointment is this French seal uh, for Elmarie Holden. You really have to bear in mind these Elmarie Holden horses that get well backed. This horse is already into four to one from ten to one. Uh, she had a very well backed horse win on the flat over at Lingfield there during the week for Holly Doyle. So it is that'd be more of a concern. But loved out, you're getting three places uh, for your eleven to two, and I, I think he should run a good race. And I was a little bit fuming I didn't end up putting an official selection up. Forget my drift today uh, at a similar enough price, six to one, seven to one. I advised him each way on the video and then I didn't put him as a selection. It was stupid from me, uh, but I've learned my lesson and hopefully this loved out uh, can run a good race for us in the opener. The beginner's chase, it's a, it's a hard race, but look, I'm going to put my faith in Willie Mullins and Willie Mullins, unfortunately, um, he, he had a good day, but just not the day I wanted him to have. Uh, second strings winning left, right and centre. I'm going to put my faith in this classical dream at even money. Look, if yeah, if last year hadn't happened, classical dream would be one to three for a race like this, even if he'd been out for the season last year. But in two below par performances, but in grade one hurdles and looked as if he was jumping big, looked as if fences might bring him on. His horse won the Supreme by five lengths on softer ground. There's currently a storm uh, happening um, outside my house, which is only 10 minutes from Leopardstown. So I think the ground will be softer than you're maybe seeing at the moment. It's down as yielding. Wouldn't surprise me if it's yielding to soft come the morning. And Classical dream, the softer the better, I think, for this horse. And I'm going to just... It is a bit of a leap of faith, but, you know... <laughs> By the end of the race, you could look at it and go even. Money was a big price on Classical Dream. He's got the back class to win a race like this and win it pretty easily. Uh, January Jets, obviously, 
holds claims Jeremy's flame was better last time at Cork but hasn't convinced so far as a chaser uh, Deffy Blue Jungle Junction Soviet Pimpernel like it's a decent race there's a bit of depth in there but this classical dream is much the best if he can uh, get back to his supreme novice hurdle form he obviously won at this meeting two years ago as a novice hurdler as well Moving on to the 110, the Paddy Rewards Club's chase. Uh, not a race I'm going to be having any bet on. Uh, hopefully, Shaqan Porsois gets the job done. I really hope he does at 8-15. to 15. If you were to pin me to the boards and tell me you must have a bet, I'd back Notebook in a, in a match bet ahead of Put the Gettle on. I think Notebook will come second. But uh, I, I really hope, more than anything, that they're chasing Shaqan Porsois home and that he can get the job done. Going forward into the future, champion, Novices Hurdle. This is up there with being one of the races of the week. And I'm going to side with Appreciated here. He's a horse I, I like an awful lot. I was just dubious about Bally Adam last time out at Fairy House. It just wasn't as good as I thought it could have been. Uh, his jumping certainly left a lot to be desired. He does have speed. He does have an awful lot of speed. And he could have too much speed for Appreciated. But as I say, a bit of rain in the forecast. You know, get that to yield into soft. Maybe pr press a further emphasis on stamina and jumping. This appreciated jump like a book. like a, He jumped like a seasoned handicapper on his maiden hurdle debut down at Cork. So I think he's got that in his favour in this race. 15 to 8. It maybe is a little skimpy. But he's got good course form. He jumps well. I'd really love him to run well. I'm going to give you an each way alternative in this race though. In the shape of fire attack for Joseph O'Brien and Dunham Myler. Joseph had a few horses run good races today. And it wouldn't surprise me if fire attack ran well at 12-1. to 1. Uh, Three place each way. He ran an awful lot better than he kind of probably should have done on his hurdling debut trucked into a grade two just got nabbed on the line by Fakira and was plenty keen that day and his step back to two miles might see uh, him to best effect he obviously won at Limerick at the Christmas festival last year down there beating Julie Stowaway who as a consequence went on to beat Bally Adam in a bumper so it's interesting that some of these form lines do uh, mix and match between certain horses this fire attack I think he's just overpriced at 12 to 1 I'd currently have him in the book at maybe 8 or 9 and as a result I think he's a decent enough each way alternative if you don't want to get involved with something at a short price the 220 is the handicap hurdle looks a very trappy race and as a result many places going I think five places with the majority of bookmakers um, I'm going to take one at a short price and one at a slightly bigger price not both near enough the top of the pile though and near enough the top of the weights as well so starting off with C. Ducker, 5-1 uh, to one for Arthur Moore and Dunham Myler. Very unexposed uh, horse, only two runs over hurdles so far. He's four, still going five. So he gets a three-pound uh, weight allowance in this race as well. And just the form got a massive boost there today. We get my drift winning the opener at Leopardstown. Uh, he beat him at Gorham Park when he was beating Galopin de Champ, who was a pretty well-regarded horse for Willie Mullins in Burning Victories colours. Get my drift was third and Mighty Blue was fourth. And Mighty Blue went on to finish second in a listed Mare's Novice race to Galois last time out. So... The form of that looks rock solid. In here off a mark of 132, I believe. And as I say, with the weight allowance, he's running in effect off what a 129 rated horse would have been running off in this race. So I think there's an awful lot going for him. He is second top in the betting there at 5-1. He's to one. He's, he's been well found. There's no getting away from that. But I think he's got rock solid claims. And I can't see him out of the first five if his runs so far are anything to go by. I think he's just better than a horse of this grade. The other one I think may be uh, above this grade and a horse that ties in very much with appreciated w uh, winning down in Cork is a horse called Master McShee who's currently available at 9-1 to one for Paddy Corkery and Ian Power. Uh, basically I think this horse will be 6-1 to one if he was trained by somebody else. Paddy Corkery not known uh, for too many winners on the track. But he's got a nice horse here, and if Appreciate it goes and wins the Grade One Novice Hurdle, this nine to one's not going to last any any matter of time for Master McShee. Uh, I think he's a, a very good horse. He was second, only beaten two lengths by Appreciate. He then went went and won a Maiden Hurdle at Cork last time by eight lengths. The Mary Beach is running in a Maiden Hurdle at Limerick t uh, tomorrow as well. A race that I'll actually cover later in the video, but. His Master McShee, I think 9 to one's fair. He too is running off a mark of 132. He doesn't get the four-year-old weight allowance, obviously. Uh, so he's running off three pounds higher in the weights than C. Ducker, even though they're off the same um, 
they're off the same rating in essence so he does have a bit to fight he's near enough the top of the weights but nine to one i think is a very fair price about this horse and it wouldn't surprise me if that price collapses to be honest uh, i think he's one of the stronger each way plays of the day but i don't think you'd be doing too far wrong uh, going away from those two horses sea ducker and master mcshee the 255 is the Paddy Power Chase, a brilliant handicap, a race that is is obviously a great race. Uh, it's been won by some good horses over the years, but it's an absolutely dismal race for me. I uh, haven't had any luck in the race in years gone by. I had Cabaret Queen in the race last year, was my main fancy for it. She fell at three out when travelling oh so well. Uh, we wouldn't have known what would have happened there. But anyway, moving on to this year's renewal, hopefully we can turn the tide. And a horse you guys know I, I like an awful lot is Captain CJ. I'm going to put him up at 11 to 1 each way for Dermot McLaughlin. Connor Maxwell takes the ride. Third in the Porterstown last time out behind Court Maid. I think that was a fair run on his first big handicap experience. And it was good to see him get that experience and, and, and put it to decent use. Jumped pretty well, uh, considering he didn't jump very well on his reappearance down at Cork, uh, which was a little bit concerning. I'm, I'm hoping that was just first time out, two mile four, just he didn't get into the race it was a grade three race as well and he was carrying a grade two's penalty in the race so i'm just hoping that was a bit of a blip uh he was obviously brought in some great form from last year second to manila indo in in a beginner second to champagne classic in a beginners and won the 10 up novices chase uh, despite being a maiden uh, over three miles a grade two race beating elwood by six lengths so he brings a fair bit of robust form to the table here running off a of mark 144 i do think he's got one of these big handicaps in him Hopefully he can run well. Uh, he, he's run well at left-handed tracks like La Navin before, as, as I mentioned with Manila Indo and the 10-up form. So they going left-handed. Uh, shouldn't be an issue, even though he's run an awful lot of his races over fences at Ferry House. Uh, I think he came second or third here in a bumper, actually, four or five years ago at this meeting. So uh, he, he has tasted experience at the track before, and hopefully he runs well at 11-1. to 1. The other horse I'll put up, it, it's a bit of a hard overhead selection, really, but this fits Henry at 16 to 1. God almighty, I wish Paul Nolan well. I, I, as, you, as many will know, I absolutely love Paul Nolan, but these Paul Nolan horses aren't running well, it's uh, fair to say. Uh, a few blips today. Camino didn't run very well. The, the horse in the bumper didn't run very well down in Limerick, and they had a horse slip up on the flat. Uh, there's that Toucan A who was very well backed. At Limerick, um, much to my disappointment, because I put him up at six to one, or put her up at six to one. Uh, she went off three to one, but she fell on the flat before jumping a hurdle. So that kind of sums up his luck at the moment. But Fitzhenry, you know, he'll be a, he'll have been campaigned with this race in mind. Third in the race two years ago, just got pipped by Roaring Bull of all uh, in last year's renewal. He's a bit of a monkey, but he's back off a of mark 140. That's where he can be competitive. Jody McGarvey got a, a spin on him in the Troy Town. Should hopefully know the horse better as a result now. And, you know, I think he's got a chance. He obviously is a bit of a monkey. He doesn't win too many times. But 16-1 to 1 for a racer getting six places uh, with a lot of bookmakers, I think, is a fair price. It wouldn't surprise me if he ran a good race into the places. The 330 is the bumper, and it's one of those. Look, if you've had a decent day... Go go ahead and back reality check. Like I'm going to put him down as as the selection for the race. I think he wins the race. It's a very short price, probably a, a price I won't be involved in unless I've had a seriously good day. Um, as I said, so I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to put it in the selection, uh, but up to you whether you want to back at that price. To be honest, uh, I do think he'll win. I think the form of his run last time out was pretty strong at Ferrier. Slightly blew up according to Patrick Mullins. That was the race appreciated. Uh, came third in last year before winning this bumper so it, it perhaps is a is a tried and tested route they go down and hopefully reality check just gets the job done to finish the day moving on to around the grounds and we've got six uh, races we're going to cover from around the grounds starting off with three at chepstow the 105 uh, handicap chase i'm going to take a chance at one at 10 to 1 each way here or a skull tickier uh, i believe is how i'm going to try and pronounce it anyway for alan jones and paddy brennan hasn't been seen since winning this race last year on similarly heavy ground beating springtown lake a horse i quite like of philip hobbs and tom o'brien's who's won who's run some very good races in decent handicaps he's been raised five pounds as a result um but he comes back to this race he's gone well fresh before and he loves this course and distance and heavy ground he's now 12 going 13 he's probably in a, up against it against some unexposed rivals but 
I just think 10 to 1's probably, uh, again, a point or two too big. I see Paddy Power taking no chances. Uh, they're down as, as uh, low as 6 to 1, but he's generally 10 to 1 available. Uh, so I, th I think that's a fair enough price, and uh, hopefully he can run well, even though he's a veteran. I think it's only a 7-runner race, which is a shame, so we're only paying for two places. But uh, Tiki Air is going to be my selection for the 105. The 140, the Grade 1 Juvenile Hurdle. A real shame not to see Nassalam in this race. Of course, I put up for the Triumph Hurdle. Uh, but I'm going to take a chance on Elm Valley for Fergal O'Brien and Paddy Brennan at 10-3. to uh, Won quite nicely uh, last time out at Sandzane on similarly heavy ground, which was good. Good to see. It was quite tacky that day. And... It was good to see him get through that ground quite well, beating a, a Gary Moore horse that was relatively well regarded, uh, Hudson de Grugy, uh, who was out of the family of Sire de Grugy. So that was a decent enough performance. There were some well regarded horses in behind that day, uh, including uh, a Nicky Henderson horse that the name escapes me, uh, but came fourth or fifth because it was the day Altior was meant to run. And anyway, all the Nicky Henderson horses uh, did end up running below par. But this Ellen Valley did it nicely that day. He was then taken out. He was decked up uh, to run in the race Adagio won at the Cheltenham December meeting. I assume he was just taken out of that race. He wasn't quite ready to run again. Uh, but he is back at this 10 to 3. There's just you're taking an awful lot on trust with this Paul Nichols horse first start in the comp in um, in the country uh, running at, at Chepstow in a Grade One. It just it just wouldn't be for me personally. Uh, it's it's not a race that uh, has done much for me in the past. All mankind won it last year brilliantly, but. I don't know. I, I I would take a chance on Ellen Valley at ten to three. I think he's the price uh, rather than this Hougree at seven to four. I think he's pretty short for a horse just coming over from France. You've no idea the quantity of that form as well. Moving on to the 250 at Chepstow, the big one, the Welsh Grand National. You guys know who I've put up uh, for this race. A horse called Dominator for Oliver Sherwood. He's in at 11 to 1. Uh, you can take 11 to 1 each way. I think that's still a fair price. I put him up at 25 to 1 as an early Christmas bet, both on Twitter and on here uh, in a video around 10 days ago. So 25 to 1 is the price I've taken. Uh, I think he's got a good chance if he jumps well, if he jumps well, if he jumps a little bit better, I suppose, than he has done in the past. I think he'll be bang there. Three and a half miles heavy ground is right up his street, I believe. Moving on to Kempton, just two, two at bigger prices as well. The 155 is a is a trappy enough mare's handicap hurdle, and I'd give a squeak uh, to Ollie Murphy's Alpha Carine in here. Um, I just think she may be going under the radar off a of mark 125. Look, she does have it to find, but she won very nicely on her hurdles debut up at I think it was Musselburgh, uh, if uh, memory serves me correctly. And I just think since then it obviously hasn't gone quite to plan. Uh, sorry, it was at Perth, not Musselburgh, uh, where she won last time, or won on her hurdle debut, then finished second at Market Raisin before disappointing behind the glancing queen at Warwick. She goes up in trip to three miles. I think that's a fair thing to do for this horse. I think she could see a bit more improvement uh, coming out of her at this uh, at this trip. Uh, sorry, she won a point-to-point -point in Ireland uh, over three miles, so really she should be staying on uh, quite well. She should be suited by this big trip. Ollie Murphy, not in the best of form, unfortunately. Hasn't had a winner in the last two weeks, but hopefully that may change. And this Alpha Carine, I think, again, she may be just a shade overpriced at 12-1. to 1. And in the big one, the 305, uh, the handicap chase, the, well, sorry, the big betting race, not the big one. Uh, the big one, I think Shishkin will win, to be honest, and I think Altior will more than likely win, but both of them are not prices I'd take. Uh, 305 at Kempton, the big handicap chase. I'm going to give one last chance to double shuffle at 16 to 1 for Tom George and Gavin Sheehan off a mark 142. It's plummeted down now. He loves this course and distance. That's the main reason behind it. Uh, I think he's got a decent chance. If he replicates some of his best form at the track, he'd be bang there. He's now off a much reduced mark and could go well at a price. 16 to 1 does seem big. Four places with a lot of bookmakers. And moving on to Limerick, where the last selection of the day will come, and it is the nap of the day. Now, I would bear in mind with Limerick, I'm very dubious whether racing will go ahead at Limerick, to be honest, tomorrow. There's an awful lot of rain forecast, and it was already heavy ground. Uh, so it's just something to maybe bear in mind. But uh, if this... Uh, race is run if this uh, card is run I think this will be my nap of the day uh, it's an each way play in the 135 the mares or sorry the 235 the mares maiden hurdle over two mile four and it's a horse called Kilbury Warrior uh, for Oliver McKeon and Brian Hayes takes the ride she's six to one 
She was a point-to-point -point winner over three miles on soft to heavy ground uh, before finishing fifth in a maiden hurdle at Navan over two and a half miles in a uh, all all sex race. That race has taken form boost after form boost, including two form boosts today alone. Ashdale Bob won the race, has gone on to win a grade two wide receiver, was second. My big uh, play for the Martin Pipe, who won the maiden hurdle at Leopardstown today, and Shadow Ryder was third, who came. Uh, and won the maiden hurdle at Limerick today. So I think there's an awful lot to like about it. She ran very well for a long way. Uh, she was leading, disputing for the majority of the way. Ended up just getting uh, run out of it in the last little kind of last two, three furlongs of the race. Back to Mare's company, two and a half miles soft ground does seem to suit. I think it's a race that's potentially exploitable and six to one is my nap of the day, Kill Bree Warrior. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below as always if you are enjoying the videos. And of course, let me know how you did today and let me know who you're fancying for tomorrow between all the cards. Who would be your nap of the day? Who's your each way nap of the day? I suppose my next best, if I was to be pressed to one, uh, would be... Uh, C Ducker, I'd assume, in the 220 handicap hurdle. Although C Ducker and Master McShee, uh, I would take as a very solid two horses for that handicap hurdle. I'm quite sweet on both of them running quite well. So those two, and obviously the Nap Kilbury Warrior. Hope uh, we end up having a bit more of a profitable day, a bit more of an enjoyable day tomorrow. I uh, hope you stay safe, stay well, land a few bets, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night for day three. Best of luck.